Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So last week during the video, I told you this week we would be making breakfast burritos. And I came up with this idea by a poll that we took in the Muscles by Brussels Facebook group. If you are not a member of the group, please go over and join us and you can have a say in the videos and recipes that we make. People were looking for things that were easy to batch prep, something you could eat on the go, breakfast won by a landslide, and savory breakfast in particular. So I figured breakfast burritos, what could be better than that? So that's what we're gonna be making today. There's three components to the breakfast burrito. The first component is the hash browns. The second component is the filling that we're gonna put into the middle of it. And the third component is the sauce that we're gonna cook that filling in. And then it's just assemble and freeze for the week. So I'm really excited to get into this. Let's get started. I've already preheated my oven to 400 degrees because we are going to be baking the hash browns because this takes away the element of us having to stand over the stove and watch them the whole time. If I were going to eat hash browns by themselves, best believe I would be cooking them over the stove because I think they taste better that way. But because these are gonna be going into a breakfast burrito, I don't think we need to be super precious about the hash browns. We just want potatoes and crispiness to go in there. So this is four potatoes that I shred in my food processor. It's about 880 grams. If you're in a pinch for time or you don't have a food processor, you can also just buy frozen hash browns where the only ingredient is potato. So I am going to be sprinkling these shredded potatoes with a teaspoon of paprika, onion powder, and garlic powder, and I'm gonna mix it in with my hands. Now, for the sake of making these as macro-friendly as we can get them, while also being as filling as satisfying as we can get them, I'm not gonna be adding oil to these. You can if you want to, just know that it's gonna change the macros, although it might make, no, not might, it will make the potatoes crispier and probably tastier, but I'm gonna skip them for today because I don't really need it. I find that there are very, very, very few recipes that I really miss oil in. Okay, so I'm adding it a little bit at a time so that I don't get one big clump of spice in here. Okay, and now I'm gonna put these on two baking sheets with a silicone silk hat on them. I'm gonna try to spread these out evenly. I'm using two so that I can give the potatoes as much space as possible because that's gonna allow them to crisp up a little bit faster. And I don't know exactly how long this is gonna take, I'm going to go in there probably every five minutes or so and stir them up and maybe switch their places in the oven. So a lot of people ask, Danny, where's the written recipe? Like I know I give you the recipe in the video, but the written recipes, we reserve those for our academy as it stands right now. So if you're ever looking for any of these videos, all of them and so many more are available in our academy, which is a monthly membership that has workouts, all of these recipes, our live Zoom calls, all of that jazz. And you can also plug the recipes into a meal planner, which is super cool if you're a big meal prepper or you can just write them down for this video, I'm just saying. Okay, I'm gonna pop these in the oven and we'll get started on the sauce. So now we're gonna move on to the sauce. This is actually pretty simple. I'm gonna use one cup of raw cashews. I'm gonna use a cup of fat-free refried beans. I like the old, old El Paso. This is my favorite one. The macros are the best. I'm gonna use a whole 16 ounce jar of salsa. This is the garlic chipotle salsa from Trader Joe's. You can use any salsa that you want. And I am just a tiny bit shy today. A half a cup of nutritional yeast. And we are gonna blend that up until it is nice and smooth. If you don't have a blender that can handle this kind of stuff, you can add some water to it because we're just gonna cook it away later. So if you need to thin it out a little bit, that's fine. Just that sauce is really, really good. Uh, my blender actually struggled a little bit to get going. So again, if you need to add liquid, just do it, it's fine. I'm not gonna salt this or anything like that because I want to taste it in the final product as we're cooking it. And then if we need to add salt to it, which I guarantee you we will, we'll do it then. But I'm gonna leave this as is. All I wanna do is dip tortilla chips in it. Okay guys, try as I might, I feel like I'm never gonna get the angle or the lighting right when we have to come over to the stove but I'm trying. Okay, so I'm gonna use my big old wok here because it's the biggest pan that I have for this. So I'm gonna heat it over medium and I'm just gonna spritz the bottom of the pan with some cooking spray. My chopped onions are in the fridge because they were making me cry a lot. So I don't want that. So this is two small chopped onions. I'm gonna add that to the pan. I'm gonna add two chopped bell peppers. I picked yellow, you can use whatever kind you like. I'm gonna let this sizzle away. It's probably gonna be about 10 minutes till these are really, really soft. So while that's cooking, I'm going to be dicing, can you see this? Focus, there we go. 
This is tofurkey sausage. This is the kale basa flavor. I actually really wanted the chorizo flavor for this recipe, but they didn't have it. I don't even know what kale basa is. I googled it and I had a Polish sausage, yeah I got that, but it said garlic, so I was like that should probably work, so I'm hoping this doesn't uh, go too poorly with this recipe. If you can find a chorizo sausage, do that. So what I like about this recipe is it, it can kind of be whatever you want it to be, and that's the way I try to make most of my recipes. If you want this recipe to be gluten free, you could skip this all together and use a gluten free wrap. We're going to be using tofu, but if you wanted to make it soy free, you could use just egg instead of this. So play with it, make it your own, okay? We're gonna dice these into small pieces. Okay, so I took the potatoes out of the oven and I consolidated them to one tray because they shrunk so much and I'm just kind of breaking them up a little bit with a fork. It's been 20 minutes with stirring in the oven and our peppers and onions are still going. It's been 10 minutes and they are just starting to get the kind of softened look that I'm going for here. So I'm gonna give this a couple more minutes. I have dogs under my feet. So these are the tiny pieces of the kielbasa. That one's yours, Joey. Okay, although this doesn't have the kick that I wanted the chorizo to have, the flavor's not gonna interfere with the flavors we're going for. It's not like Italian or apple sage, which would have totally clashed, which is what I was hoping for. But get the chorizo if you have it. So now we're gonna add that to the pan and allow some of the chorizo to you know, start to crisp up on the sides. You don't have to have the whole thing be burnt or anything, but just to get a little bit of texture going on the side of that seitan. You could use soy curls if you wanted to. You could make this sausage yourself from scratch. I have some recipes on how to make your own seitan sausage. Just for the sake of convenience, this is what I'm using today. Okay, so we have some nice little blackened bits here, and I've just kind of been stirring and watching Shameless and stirring and watching Shameless. Now I'm gonna add two bricks of tofu that I'm gonna crumble up with my hands right into the pot. I've had them cut open and just kind of draining upside down over the sink here. Okay. So I don't press it or anything because we're already cooking the water out. It's getting pretty heavy in this pot. This is why I used a big pot. We're gonna pour that sauce in and we're gonna stir it through. Okay, so it's really thick. Oh yeah. If you wanted to make extra of this sauce, I would not oppose that. If you could see the mayhem of dishes that is happening behind the camera, that's what I want to see. I want to see a cooking show on YouTube that isn't <laughs> sort of trying to have the perfect everything. Because like really, when you're cooking, especially when you're cooking this amount of food, there's mess. One of my clients recently shared a picture of her kitchen and said something along the line, this is why I don't meal prep, because her kitchen was full of dishes and things like that. And I mean, I think everybody's kitchen kind of looks like that while they're cooking. If I didn't have dogs, my floor would be filthy. I want to see less curated imperfection and more real life imperfection on the internet, please. Not likely, Danny. You can see we have this really wet mixture. I'm gonna move the camera. So this is the burrito ASMR happening here. But it's very wet. And I'm just gonna let it cook a little bit longer. I'm not looking for anything in particular here while it cooks, but I'm gonna let it cook. I'm gonna turn it up just a hair because there's so much stuff in there. And I'm gonna let it cook until it gets a little bit stickier. You guys wanna see? I'll show you real fast. Ah, okay. So this was looking a bit sticky. I tasted it and it needed some salt. I added some salt. And I also added like an eighth a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. It's very flavorful, but it's not very spicy. So if you like spice, you're gonna wanna add some more heat. I know a lot of people really don't like spice, including Jocko. That is quite good. It's time to assemble. So I have my filling, my potatoes, 12 sheets of aluminum foil, just bigger than my wraps, which I'm gonna be using Joseph's Flax Oat and Wheat Wraps. I love these wraps so much because the macros on them are great. They're still soft like a regular tortilla. I think they're fantastic. The macros on these are 80 calories, 12 grams of carbs, two and a half grams of fat, and seven grams of protein, and they have four grams of fiber. The only thing I don't love about these is I can't find them in the like big burrito size. So these are eight inch wraps. So they're gonna make burritos that are about the size of like an Amy's frozen burrito or a Sweet Earth frozen burrito. I'm actually gonna lay all 12 of them out 
and fill them that way so I can make sure that there's equal distribution in all 12 of the tortillas. I wanted to show you how I'm doing this. I am not an expert burrito roller at all, and these are quite stuffed, so they're a little bit messy. So I'm kind of wetting my hands in between and pushing the filling in a little bit. And then I'm taking the outside and tucking it over, and then really trying to smoosh all that filling in. You can see a tiny, tiny bit is coming out, dragging it down, continuing to fold it over, and then wrapping the burrito around folding and rolling nice and tight. And once these are frozen, they're not just gonna pop open. So even if there's a little bit of leakage, it should be okay. Thanks so much for tuning in. We have our 12 breakfast burritos here. Each one has 356 calories, 38 grams of carbs, 13 grams of fat, and 26 grams of protein. You can freeze these. You can reheat them in the oven or in the toaster oven or in the microwave. Uh, you can just take them with you to work just like this and heat them up at work if you're going to work right now. Let me know what you think. Now I have to clean my kitchen because it's destroyed. That was a big bite for an internet bite. Yes, yes. I sprinkled some hot sauce on it as I went, because that's how I am. If you guys like these videos, let us know what you want to see. We'll try to do more of it in the future. Come join our Facebook group, Muscles by Brussels Radio. Hope you enjoyed this recipe, and if you make it, let me know what you think. We'll talk soon. Bye.